There we go. All right. And we're off. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sam Furio. I am the outreach coordinator for the building decarbonization team at the Maryland Department of the Environment. I will be moderating this session this afternoon. Uh, for those of you that have emailed the building decarbonization team, uh, I am the face behind the email and also behind the phone if you've given us a call. So um, thanks so much for all your inquiries and please keep them coming our way. Um, thank you for joining the, the second session of the Benchmarking and Reporting Working Group. This afternoon, Dr. Zach Brazola, affectionately known as Dr. Decarb, will be talking through benchmarking and reporting with a focus on the official draft guidance that was distributed during session one of the Benchmarking and Reporting Working Group on September 10th. Uh, we are also joined today by Charlotte Aitken, a contractor supporting the Energy Star program who will walk everyone through a demo of Portfolio Manager. So just so everyone's aware, this session will be recorded and uploaded to the BEPS YouTube playlist. Uh, there will be a portion for live Q&A at the end of this session, but please bear with us as we go through our presentations first. And if uh, you haven't been able to catch some of our previous informational sessions, uh, you can find those also uploaded to the BEPS YouTube playlist today. So check that out. And uh, just as an FYI, FYI, the chat has been disabled. And so if you're interested in submitting questions for the Q&A portion of this session, you'll need to click on the activities button, which is at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Uh, it's a circle, triangle, square, all grouped together. If you hover over it, it says activities. Click on that and you can submit a question in the Q&A and we'll uh, work to get to that um, as time allows during a Q&A portion of this, of this session. Uh, we're also going to be doing a poll uh, briefly during this session and you can access that poll feature uh, during or via the same button that you can get to the Q&A. So that circle, triangle, square, that's where you need to go. Uh, so without further ado, I think we're good to kick this thing off. I'd like to now introduce Dr. Zach Brazola, section head of MDE's building decarbonization team. Take it away, Zach. Thank you, Sam. And thank you all for joining us today. Before we dive in, if you require an overview of BEPS, uh, let's go to the next slide, please. Uh, we would point you to previous webinars and technical documentation that is currently available for viewing on the department's BEPS website. You can access this website by scanning the QR code on the left side of the screen or by searching Maryland BEPS in Google as most of us do these days anyway. If you'd like to be added to our BEPS email list, you can do so by scanning the QR code on the right side of your screen. Today's webinar is focused on a specific aspect of BEPS implementation, but if you have any questions regarding the proposed regulation, you may contact the building decarbonization team via the email address or phone number at the bottom of your screen. Now on to our agenda for today. First, we're gonna introduce you to benchmarking again, uh, for those of you that were with us last time and give you an overview of benchmarking using Energy Star Portfolio Manager. Then uh, Charlotte will provide the demo. We'll talk a little bit about entering utility data and exclusions and give you a teaser for what's coming next with uh, the next session on um, MDE BEPS Montgomery County alignment and talk a little bit about third-party verification in campuses. So before we get started, we have a poll question to check on how familiar you are with MDE's benchmarking guide. So let's go to the poll now. Uh, if you go to that circle, triangle, square and click the poll button, uh, you can fill out your response. How much of MDE's benchmarking guide have you read? And there's no wrong or right here, just trying to get a sense of where everybody is in terms of diving into this. So yeah, figure out, choose your best to uh, describe what you've done and, and we will do our best to take that into account as we move forward. All right, I'm seeing a lot of people skimming it. That's good. All right, uh, seem to be stabilizing out. Five more seconds to fill out the poll.
All righty. So it looks like we've got, uh, yeah, I can share the results with everybody. Uh, six people haven't done, looked at it yet. 13, the majority, have skimmed sections. Uh, three have read most of the guide. Two have finished, and two have finished the guide and provided feedback. And we do appreciate the feedback that we have received from those uh, that have already done it. And if you haven't uh, read the guide and submitted feedback, if you have any, please, uh, please take some time to do so. We are trying to finalize that guidance document here pretty shortly. Uh, when we get to the end of the today, we'll uh, kind of share it all again for how to provide feedback. But uh, in the next two weeks, take a few minutes to look through it. We want to make sure we're providing the best information to you all uh, so that everybody can be successful in benchmarking. So we thank you in advance for your help in trying to approve the guide. On to the next slide. So let's really get uh, started uh, into this, what is benchmarking? Again, for those of you that maybe didn't make it last time, uh, let's define benchmarking to make sure we're all on the same page. Well, at the high level, benchmarking is trying to understand how your building is performing at the end of the year. You know, how did it do last year in comparison to other buildings, but really, especially as we think about BEP, in comparison to the performance standards uh, and also how you performed versus your building last year. And it really takes a few key pieces of information beginning a little bit more work to put in how your building's used and what's going on. So you might think about that if you've got an office building and maybe there's a restaurant or a, a pharmacy on the first floor. Uh, that might be, uh, those would be two different building use types, but they're in one physical building. And so you'd actually put both of those, as the building owner, you'd put both of those in portfolio manager and ensure that the energy use uh, associated with that, those different property types is put in as well. And portfolio manager is set up to do this from the start. And you put in things like how much electricity, if you're using natural gas or fuel oil or propane, all of that would go in to, to the benchmarking tool, the portfolio manager. And basically, you're required under the proposed regulation to do this by June 1st of 2025 and every June 1st thereafter to be tracking that performance. And I know uh, many of you just preempting a question that we got last time and we hear all the time, you know, a lot of that data, especially your electricity and natural gas, uh, comes from your utility provider. And we're actually working very closely with the utility companies across the state to, to make the data for that energy use of those two fuel types really streamlined. And so we're working towards a place, and, and many of the utilities already have that, where you can, we'll talk about this in a minute, but basically, it all could come automatically into your account or be uploaded really easily with a spreadsheet. So June 1st is 2025 is not that far away. So that's why we're encouraging you to start thinking about benchmarking and get started. And the good news is over 4,000 buildings across the state are already benchmarking. And we think there are about 9,000 covered buildings when all is said and done. And so we're actually in a pretty good spot. But for those of you that aren't benchmarking or trying to benchmark new buildings or might be adjusting things, like you're in the right place. Uh, also, as we go, uh, as we finalize the regulations, you'll be able to apply for exemptions that are allowed for in the BEPS regulation. We're not gonna talk about that in this session, but that'll be coming in the future as well. So on to the next slide. There's, a really high level overview of how this is going to work in Energy Star Portfolio Manager. And again, for those of you that are benchmarking before, benchmarking in Montgomery County, this is going to be very familiar. Building owners are on the left, and on the right is off MDE. And the first thing is first, you need to have an Energy Star Portfolio Manager account. If you've already got an account, you've done the first thing. Then uh, you're going to add your properties and enter all the data and review it and confirm it via the data quality checker every year. That's the kind of verify in every year is just make sure all of that is complete. Um, and in the first year, you only have to do this in the first year, but in the first year, just like in Facebook, you're gonna send a connection request to MDE. Uh, it's called MD-BEPS on the Portfolio Manager site. And again, this is in the guide, but you're gonna send a connection request. We're gonna accept it. And then once we've accepted it, you'll get a no notification. And from there, you're gonna share the properties uh, with us, 
that are covered under BEPS. And you know, why do you have to go through this whole process? Well, some people might have more than one property. And if you have two of them, one is a 40,000 square foot office building and one's a 20,000 square foot office building, you don't actually need to share that 20,000 square foot office building or in a maybe more relatable, if it's 30,000 square feet, it's covered in Montgomery County's BEPS, but not in MDE's BEPS, then you would only share with us the ones that are covered in MDE's BEPS. So now that I've given you that high level idea of what we're thinking about, um, and, and obviously uh, we were gonna hand it over to Charlotte to walk us through a demo of setting up an account and entering properties in Portfolio Manager. Charlotte, thanks for being with us today. I'm gonna hand it over to you now. Sounds good. I will steal the screen. All right, you should all be able to see my screen now. Um, as Zach said, my name is Charlotte Aiken and I'm a contractor supporting the Energy Star program. So today I'll be providing a overview of Portfolio Manager, including um, how to create an account, how to add a property, adding meters, um, connecting and sharing, and then we'll do a brief overview of data quality. So we'll begin today's demo on the Energy Star site, where we'll go through the steps to create a Portfolio Manager account. So on the right-hand side of the benchmarking page, which um, you can navigate to by clicking Commercial Buildings and then Benchmark, um, you'll see there's a box for Energy Star Portfolio Manager um, with a link to create a new account. So clicking that link will take you to the create an account page on the Portfolio Manager site where, where you'll be prompted to enter a username, a password, um, and some information about yourself. So I'll note that while you can change your password at any time, um, your username is permanent and cannot be changed. So definitely worth considering when creating your account for the first time. Um, and then further down on this page, you'll enter some information about your organization, um, and whether or not you want your account name and username to be searchable by others. So in order to share benchmarking data with MDE, which we'll get to later in the demo, um, you'll want to select yes here. This does not, however, make any of your building data or building information, building details public. Um, it's really just your username so that you can connect with other users. Um, and then once you've completed all the required fields, you'll click create my account. Um, for the purposes of today, I'll be hopping back over to my existing Portfolio Manager account um, where we'll go through the demo. But after logging in, this is what your page will look like. Um, Portfolio Manager opens on the My Portfolio tab, which displays a list of the properties that you've created or have been shared with you. So you'll see in here I have a handful of different test properties that I've created in my account. Um, and I'll also point out that Portfolio Manager is set up in a tab structure. So you'll see we're on the My, Por My Portfolio tab now. Um, in addition, we've got a sharing tab, reporting, and recognition. And then on the top right-hand side of the page, we do have some additional pages. So we've got a, a settings page, some notifications, contacts, help, and then sign out. So we'll review most of those additional pages later on in the demo. Um, we'll start by creating a property. So we'll click add a property on the left-hand side. And then you'll be asked uh, some basic questions about the property, including the property type, um, the number of buildings, and then the construction status. So today we'll be benchmarking an office. You'll see there's lots of, to choose from. And our building today will just be a single building. So we'll select one. In most cases, you'll select existing for the construction status, but um, Portfolio Manager does have some capabilities if you'd like to enter a project that's in the design phase um, or a test property, which I find is a great way to um, test out some of Portfolio Manager's features, play around with data and the data quality checker without creating a real property. So today I'll actually be selecting test property. Um, well, actually, I'll keep it as existing for the purposes of you all, even though this, this is a test property. Then we'll click Get Started. Um, the next page asks for some additional property information, including the name of the property, the address, the year built, the gross floor area, irrigated area, occupancy, lots of fun stuff. So I will enter in some sample information. I think I've got 
a test address in here located in Baltimore. Which I can just click. We'll make sure to select we're in Maryland. Um, and then I guess, yeah, for fl gross floor area, I'll say we've got a 50,000 square foot office building with zero square feet and irrigated area. And then I'll say the occupancy is 90%. So one note about occupancy, um, occupancy is the percentage of your property's gross floor area that is occupied and operational. So for an office, occupancy is a measure of the tenant spaces that are leased. So for example, if you have a 10 story building um, and one floor is vacant, but the other nine floors are fully leased, then you, the occupancy would be 90%. Um, similarly, if 50% of the gross floor area is vacant, then the occupancy would be 50%. So oftentimes though, um, building occupancy can fluctuate throughout the year. So in this case, you can calculate the average occupancy over that year timeframe. Um, so say the building was occupied, 50% occupied for the first half of the year and 100% occupied for the second half, uh, the occupancy level you would enter into portfolio manager would be 75%. We do have more information about occupancy best practices for different property types on the Portfolio Manager FAQ page, which I highly recommend reviewing and bookmarking. Um, and I'm sure we can provide a link to that following the training. And then I'll also note um, the metrics highlighted in blue can be hovered over or clicked on for more information. Um, these are often metrics that we get questions about. So um, hovering over them provides a quick explanation and then clicking will take you to the overall Energy Star glossary, which is also a great, great tool. Next, you'll complete a section on standard IDs. Um, from MDE, you'll be entering a unique building identifier or UBID, um, which can be found in this bottom other dropdown. So we'll go in here, select UBID. And for the purposes of today, we'll just enter a sample value but um, each covered property will have its own UBID. Um, so MDE can track you know, which building is which in Portfolio Manager. Uh, and then finally, Portfolio Manager asks a couple of questions about the property. So whether or not uh, the property, property's energy consumption includes parking areas, um, if it has a significant data center on site, if it has a retail store or a restaurant or cafeteria. Um, today, I think we'll say that it has a parking area, but again, if you'd like to create a test property, you can play around with these, see, see what portfolio manager asks you if you do select those different boxes. Um, then on the next page, you'll see a, a brief summary of the information that we entered previously, as well as an additional breakdown by um, property use. So this top section is the overall office, and then you'll see we've got a breakdown for the parking area as well. So for the office, there's just some additional metrics portfolio manager asks for. So we'll say we've got 60 weekly operating hours. Maybe we have 100 workers on the main shift, 100 computers. And we'll say we've got 50% or more uh, for the percent that the property can be cooled and heated. And then for the parking area, this does ask um, some more information about the parking area. So if it's an open parking lot, um, an enclosed parking garage, or sorry, a partially enclosed parking garage or a completely enclosed parking garage. And you'll note that these do have more information as well if you have any um, clarifying questions. Today, I think we'll say we've got a 10,000 square foot partially enclosed parking garage size and then Zero, feet, zero square feet for an open parking lot and a, par a completely enclosed parking garage. So then we'll click add property and continue. And then this takes you to the main property page. So this is what a uh, page for each property will look like. You'll note that this also has a similar tab structure to the overall tab structure of Portfolio Manager. Um, it opens up on the summary tab, which provides a quick summary of your property's metrics. You'll note that these are all not available right now because we haven't entered any data yet, but those will populate um, once you do begin to get uh, energy usage data in your profile. 
And then there are some additional information on this page about the data quality checker and sharing, which we'll get to a little bit later on. Um, the details tab is an overview of most of those building details that we just entered. So we've got the property GFA, the occupancy, our, our UBID on the side, and then our breakdown of building details um, over on this main part of the page, and a breakdown with a graph, uh, which is often helpful if your property has many different property types. Um, you can edit most of these details on this page. So you'll see there's buttons to edit. You can also click the drop down and click edit use details here. And then if, for example, your property has a new um, use type, like let's say there's a renovation and now you have a restaurant, you can add a, a use type in this drop down, um, which will prompt for those additional um, building information like we entered previously. So we'll move to the energy tab. This is where your energy meters will be stored. You'll see we have no meters and therefore we're getting a little exclamation point from portfolio manager saying that we need to enter some. So that is what we will do. So we'll click add a meter on the right hand side. And I think today we'll be entering two meters. We'll start with an electric meter. You'll see there's a couple of prompts asking for some more information. Ours will be purchased from the grid and we will just be creating one, but you can create multiple at the same time. And then we'll click get started. And then this page asks for a little bit more information. So you can change the name of the meter, which can be helpful if you do have multiple. Um, say, you know, you've, it depends how your building is set up, but you could have a different meter for each floor of the building. So it could be helpful to say floor two, floor three in the meter name. Um, this is the type of electricity that we selected previously. And then we'll want to enter in the units here, which is, which is a big one. Um, your units can be found typically on your utility bill. So you'll want to make sure that you're reporting in the correct units so that um, your data isn't skewed at all. And then for the date the meter became active, this will typically be the date from which um, you have energy data that you'll begin to report. So for our purposes, I'll say, actually, sorry, I'll say January 1st, 2023. Um, and we will leave this checkbox selected that this meter still is in use. And we'll click Create Meters. So then this next page um, is, a, is a kind of a double check to ask if this meter is accounting for the total energy consumption of the property. Um, for now, we will say that it's not because we do plan to add a second meter during this training. Um, in the chance that your building has one meter for the whole property, you'll select this top button um, and portfolio manager will know that the full building energy use is coming from this one meter. Um, today, I'll select the lower button and we'll say that this electric grid meter is maybe um, accounting for the, the electricity from the tenant areas. So then we'll click apply selections. Um, and this next page is where you can begin entering data. So there's a couple different methods to enter data into Portfolio Manager. Um, you can do so manually. So you can click add an entry and begin typing, you know, a start date and end date and the usage value. Um, you'll also note that there are options to enter cost data um, and demand data. This is optional. Um, so you'd be able to enter the start and end date here. We are going to um, use this spreadsheet upload today. So to do that, you'll click this uh, link here for the single meter spreadsheet, which will download onto your computer. Let's see if I can open it rather quickly. So you can see what that looks like. So it opens um, a blank spreadsheet where you can enter um, similarly the start date, end date, and usage information that is asked for in Portfolio Manager. Um, oftentimes, you know, if you are getting bulk data from a utility, they will send that to you in spreadsheet format, or perhaps you're tracking it on your own in a spreadsheet. So it's oftentimes faster if if you're already storing if you're already storing that data in a spreadsheet to populate it into the portfolio manager format 
and then you can click upload and it will populate all at once as opposed to um, entering manual data. But fortunately for you all, I do have a pre-populated spreadsheet. So we'll click choose file um, and we can choose our spreadsheet from our computer and click open. And then once you've got that uploaded here, the name will populate and you can click upload and you'll see it immediately just populated about 13 months worth of data. So it's very quick, especially if you already have data stored in your in a spreadsheet format. So then we can click save bills and then that meter's done. So all that data is entered. Um, this is roughly the amount of data that you'll need to have uploaded by June 1st, 2025. Yours though will be from January 1st, 2024 through December 31st, 2024. Um, this is 2023 data. And then we will go back and create an additional meter today. So going back to the property page, back to the energy tab, and we'll click add a meter again. And this time we will be entering a fuel meter, which um, is a slightly different process, although um, not too different, uh, just because fuel oil is often entered as a delivery. Um, you know, it's not something that is used monthly. You might get a shipment uh, every two months, every six months. So Portfolio Manager does not expect you to have rigid dates entered here. You can just enter your usage, you know, as it's as it's delivered to you. But similarly, you can change the name of the meter. You'll want to select the units. I think today I'll go ahead and say gallons. And then um, I'll use that same date that the meter became active. It's in use, and then you'll see here, Portfolio Manager auto-selected this checkbox for entering as delivery because fuel oil is typically um, delivered fuel. So we'll create that meter. And then we've got this same page again, which is asking for a clarification if these meters do contribute to the full energy use of the property. And now I'll go and change that to um, say that they do now account for the, the full energy usage, energy consumption for our office building. We'll click apply selections. And then we, we've got a very similar looking page here. So we can enter a manual entry here. And today I will actually be entering um, a negative value. And I'll explain why. So there are a couple of exempt property types through MDE, um, one of those being a food service facility. So we will enter a negative value to account for that property space, for that property type. Um, and you'll see that we immediately get a pop-up box. Portfolio Manager doesn't like that we've entered a negative value because that is not typical for a consumption, <laughs> um, but this is to account for the exemption. So essentially what all you need to do here is just select a reasoning for why you have an, a negative consumption value. Um, we'll select other and we'll just type food service facility. And then we can save bills. So it will save with this justification and it will save with the negative value. Um, and then when we navigate back to the energy tab, you'll see that both of our meters are saved here. Um, you can navigate to them again by clicking the highlighted blue link, or you can, um, you know, in the following year, go in and add an additional year's worth of data to those meters. Um, I think now we will move over to connecting and sharing. So I'll navigate over to our contacts page. Um, this page, so it presents to you a list of the different portfolio manager users that you are connected with. Um, you'll see that I'm not currently connected with MDE. So I'll go ahead and click add new contact. And then this page uh, provides a couple different ways that you can search for a new, a new connection. So the top half um, is to connect with an existing portfolio manager user. And then on the bottom, there is um, it is possible to send an invite request to someone who's not currently using Portfolio Manager. 
fortunately for us, we can just enter the MDE username in the username field, MD BEPS, and click search. And they'll pop right up. So I can click connect. So I've just sent them um, a connection request. And I'll see a green box notifying me that my connection request has been sent. And then you'll note that I now have a little exclamation point on my notifications page. So if I click on that, um, under notices, you'll see that I'm now connected to Maryland MDE. Um, we'll clear that for now. So um, yeah, back to the graphic that Zach had pre presented earlier. So this is the time where MDE will have to, on, from their end, um, accept your connection request. And you will see a notification when that has happened. Um, Chris so kindly has connected and accepted our sharing request live. Um, but you will receive a notification when they have uh, accepted your connection request. At that point, you can share properties with MDE. So. Um, you do have to wait until you're connected with them as a contact before you can share a property. Um, but at that point, you can navigate to the sharing tab. Um, the sharing tab does have a quick list of the different um, accounts that you have shared properties with. So you'll see I've got one property shared with Kudret, my colleague, who some of you may know from different portfolio manager trainings. Um, and then you'll also see that there is um, some buttons to share properties. So to connect with MDE, you'll want to click this middle button. They are not a utility, but they um, will be, ex you'll be connecting with them to exchange data. So you'll use the middle button, which then takes you to a page where you can um, tell them, tell portfolio manager which properties you'd like to share. So from this drop down, you'll note my only option, my only contact that I have um, an option to share with is MDE. I'm not connected with any other utilities on this account. So I'll select MDE here. And then I'll want to go in and select the property that I would like to share with them. So I'll share our test office that we created and I'll click apply selection. Um, it is possible that you may have multiple properties to share with MDE. So in that case, you can, from the drop down, you know, select all that apply and you can share multiple properties at once. So I'll just be selecting one property where it says uh, nicely confirms that I'm just sharing one. And then finally, you will choose your sharing permissions. So we'll be selecting bulk sharing and then exchange data with read only access. Um, so I'll, I'll explain some background on the sharing process. So essentially when you share a property, um, it is establishing a connection between your property and MDE in Portfolio Manager. So read-only access allows MDE to view your building details and your building uh, usage data, but they can't make any changes. So they can view, but they can't edit. Um, you on the building owner side can change your property details. You can upload additional data. You can um, delete data and re-upload data. They can MDE will just be able to see the most current um, status of your account. So you can make all the edits you want on your side. Um, they can just view it. So you'll be selecting exchange data, read only access, and then you will click authorize exchange. Then you'll get another nice green banner indicating that you've successfully shared um, your properties. And then you'll click close. So you'll want to make sure that you do that before June 1st um, to make sure that your property has been shared. And then you'll see Maryland MDE does now appear in my nice table indicating that we now share one property. Um, but like I said, that may be more than one if you do have multiple properties on the covered buildings list. Uh, and then finally, I think we'll talk a little bit about the data quality checker and data quality in Portfolio Manager. So we'll navigate back to our test office that we created, back to this first page. Um, you'll note that there is a box for the data quality checker here. Um, and I'll, so, 
throughout throughout the demo, there's been you know a couple instances where we've seen a little exclamation point. For example, when we entered in a negative value or when we didn't have any um, energy meters entered. So Portfolio Manager does have some built-in data quality alerts to make sure that you you know are uh, entering entering data properly in a way that um, can be benchmarked. But in addition, there is the data quality checker where you can run a check of a specific time frame of data um, to make sure that there are no errors. So we will run this data quality checker for the time frame of data which I have entered. Um, and Portfolio Manager asks for a year ending date. So to pull a calendar year's worth of data, we'll select December 31st. And because I entered 2023 data, we will be selecting 2023. Um, when you all do this before June 1st, you'll want to select 2024 there because that is the first reporting year of data. Um, and then we'll click Run Checker. And you'll note that we have a couple different errors. So this red stop button um, is typically something that's a little more important to fix before submitting. So you'll see we've got an issue with our fuel oil meter. Um, and Portfolio Manager, in addition to explaining the problem, does tell you how to solve that, which is um, very helpful. And then you'll note we've got two alerts. So our property has no waste or material meters, and our property has no water meters. These are not required fixes. Um, they're, they're merely suggestions, but they do um, appear in the data quality checker as well. So, and you can run the data quality checker at any point in time. Um, you can run it as you're checking, as you're entering data to make sure you're on the right track. Um, it's a very useful tool. And um, yeah, it can be found right on the summary tab. So I think that probably brings us to the end of our demo today. Um, I hope this was helpful and I'm sure there's questions. Um, I think we'll be directing all questions today to our um, Energy Star help email, which I'm happy to put in the chat after I um, stop sharing. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to um, reach out. I'll also quickly flag our help page up here, which does have tons of resources. So we've got um, fact sheets and how-to guides, FAQs, the glossary, um, as well as some live and recorded trainings. So lots of lots of options for help and assistance if you do have questions. Um, and then again, if you can't find an answer to your question on the help page, feel free to send us an email. We are happy to help. So yeah, hope this was helpful. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Charlotte. That was great. Um, all right. Now we're gonna finish up with MDE's portion. So let me just get sh back to sharing one second. All righty. Can someone confirm they can see that screen? I can see it, Sam. All right, Thanks cool. Thanks very much. All right, then I'll hand it back to you, Zach. Great. Um, so as Charlotte just showed, there are three different ways to enter your utility data. We expect most building owners are going to be using the web services connection or the spreadsheet upload option because that data will be provided by your electric and gas company uh, using one of those two methods. So I just want to touch briefly on web services data. If we could go to the next slide, please. You're going to basically, the way to think about this is that for each uh, you're going to do a handshake with your utility company for your building, and you'll go through a process to identify the electric or gas meters at your building and verify that information is, a, is correct. And you're essentially going to say something like, this is my account, and these are my buildings, and please, you know, here is my master meter, or, or one meter at least from each, each building, you know, please give me my data. And then they're going to review that request and, and kind of give you back, here's all the meters we think are at that property. And so that's kind of how that handshake process is going to work at a high level. We've been working since early this summer with the utilities to get this process ironed out. Um, and so each utility is going to be a little bit different, uh, but we're going to have a website with the 
kind of the contact and form information for each utility in Maryland that is going to kind of have the instructions for that specific utility. So that's coming soon. Um, maybe you're already connected with your utility and doing that because a number of them across the state are already uh, have this capability. And you know, for you, if you're really nerding out about the details, you're going to use that same connection request for a lot of the cases where you're doing web service data. Um, web service exchange, you're going to use the same kind of uh, system that we just showed you for connecting with MDE. So now let's talk a little bit about exclusion and negative meters. And Charlotte kind of hinted at this as one way uh, with that negative uh, fuel oil meter. Uh, but there are some instances where you're going to want to exclude certain energy use data because it's not something we're looking for under Maryland's BEPS. And these are food service facilities, parking lots and garages, and EV charging. And so each ex exemption has a slightly different process that the benchmarking ex guide explains in an easy to follow process. And so for more information about your unique situation, uh, there's a lot of great EPA resources as well to help you figure out the specifics of your kind of funky specific challenges. Um, and so you also now know how to enter that negative meter as Charlotte shows. And, um, We've gotten a couple of questions on some clarity around this. On uh, one of the questions is like, if your garage is included in the energy use of your building and it's not separately metered or submetered, you can exclude it. Uh, you can keep it in, and we have in Portfolio Manager a way to subtract and estimate the energy use for that parking area. So those are the kinds of things where you know if it's in there and there's no way to pull it out, it's not penalized for, we have a way of, of estimating, uh, but in general, if you can pull it out, that's gonna be the best way forward. So uh, next slide, please. We often get asked questions, and back to this kind of frequently asked questions thing about how Maryland BEPS lines up with Montgomery County's BEPS. And we're gonna be having a webinar on November 14th, the kind of benchmarking and reporting working group three uh, to dig into how MDE aligns with Montgomery County on BEPS benchmarking and reporting, uh, and really thinking about the you know that re this reporting requirements and how to submit both. So we're releasing a draft document for your feedback today. Uh, both the guide. So in addition to the MDE benchmarking guide, there's this additional addendum for Montgomery County, and you'll you'll see this for those of you that are really in it here for the nitty gritty. And I saw a question already coming in around campuses. We have a campus working group coming up I'll talk about. We're going to release some additional guidance for campuses. There's all these different pieces we're releasing in manageable chunks to streamline them for the right audiences. And then we're going to take all of that guidance and put it together uh, so there's one comprehensive document to help you uh, uh, as we move forward. So we're releasing that draft guidance today. And you can easily access the feedback form for it through a link right in the guidance at the top of the guidance document itself. But in summary, there's been a few, we've made a few updates to our including guidance uh, based on feedback we've received from you all, right? So we're making changes based on the feedback we receive from you all. And, and that's why it's so important we ask you to take the time to dig in. Uh, but basically we've set it up so that buildings in Montgomery County can use the same portfolio manager entry for both submittals to MDE and, uh, at Montgomery County DEP. And so you'll actually just connect and share with both. And, and, and then that'll be that. And we'll just both independently look at and read your data. And by following the slightly updated guidance on some of those exclusions, you'll be able to make sure that it, it works for both. So uh, that'll be really that we'll dig in more in the next session. And, and in the uh, feel free to look at the document when you have a chance. And we should drop the link in the chat. Uh, yep, great. So uh, on to third-party verification. So again, I want to clarify there's two different things. There's the data quality check you run at the end of every time you bet you sit before you submit your data. That's in Portfolio Manager Data Quality Checker. Make sure there's no big red exclamation mark. That's one thing. You have to do that every year but in 2026, so not this year, although we've gotten a ton of questions about that. So we're, we're putting it in. In 2026, so a whole nother year down the line, year and a bit down the line, and every five years after, data accuracy needs to be verified by a, a third party with approved 
credentials. And that's because we're going to use that energy data to determine compliance. And we want to ensure that all buildings are properly benchmarking for the fairness for all covered buildings. And uh, we have in the technical support document, so that came along with the regulation, uh, a list of fields that must be verified by this third party. And we currently have listed four different licenses or certifications that third party verifiers must have. They must be a professional engineer issued in the US, a licensed architect issued in the US, a certified energy manager or a building energy assessment professional. At this moment, this is the full list of credentials for verifiers. If you would like to suggest an additional credential, please email beps.mde at maryland.gov, our contact email, with the subject third-party verification credentials. And please include your justification for why this credential provides a rigorous training to provide to technically qualify someone to benchmark and has the ethical requirements to prevent misuse. And also, you can find a verifier with these credentials that we've listed. Uh, because these are the standard credentials for Portfolio Manager, you can find them in the Energy Star Licensed Professional Finder. We'll drop a link for that chat now. Um, and also, in addition, based on feedback from you all as well, we have clarify, will clarify in the final benchmarking guide that the same third party can provide your building with benchmarking and verification services. We hope this flexibility will streamline the process for building owners while stressing that the viability of the simplification relies on strict adherence to professional standards of each certification. On to the next slide. Campuses, and I saw a question come in about campuses as well. So that's a whole nother working group. Uh, we'll be having uh, just next week um, at this, I believe, yeah, this time next week, uh, campus level reporting is a flexibility in BEPS for co-located properties. And the covered buildings list will not necessarily identify you as a campus, so you will need to submit a form to notify the department that you are campus. There are two scenarios where you might report as a campus. Portfolio manager has suggested property types that are recommended to report as a campus, for example, hospitals with multiple buildings. And then the other option is the kind of one specifically meeting MDE's definition of a campus in the regulations, such as a university or a college campus. Our definition is a collection of two or more buildings of any building type or size that act as a single cohesive property with a single shared primary function and are owned and operated by the same party, such as, but not limited to, higher education or hospital campuses, as determined by the department. So there are some intricate details to campus compliance, much of which is already listed in the TM 24-01, but for more information sessions, uh, uh, more information come to that session next week. Um, if you have questions about campus compliance, let's save them for, that, for next week. So wrapping up here, uh, there have been some great questions coming in. I've tried to answer a few of them on the fly here. Um, we're going to try to answer as many as we can now uh, in the last 10 minutes here. But feel free to use the Q&A feature to add a few more if you've got any. And if you have any specific questions about the Energy Star tool, please start with the help desk from, from the Energy Star team that Charlotte was mentioning. Uh, and they also have a lot of great uh, resources available in their FAQ. So we shared the benchmarking guide at that last meeting. Um, and we're resharing it now. Your constructive feedback, we have a little bit more time, another two weeks, as I said at the beginning, you know, will help us make the guide clearer for all covered buildings reporting to MDE. So we thank you for those who have already submitted questions and look forward to your further feedback. Uh, it, for those of you that hadn't quite read the guide or skimmed it, it if you still have questions, please read it and fill out the survey. Um, and uh, we're going to put that information in the chat again. So on to the next slide. As I mentioned earlier, the next session will be Thursday, November 14th, 2024, from 2 to 3 p.m. And we will dive into uh, Montgomery County and Maryland statewide BEPS, how to send data to both and review as well that form and the feedback you provide, which we're asking for by November 8th uh, for that specific form. It's relatively short. So we're going to now turn it over to the final questions. And if you have, again, here's our contact information if you need it. So, yeah, let's dive into it, Sam. 
All right. Thank you, Zach. And um, thank you again, Charlotte, for that great demo. Uh, sorry, everyone. We, um, we've we only got about 10 minutes to address Q&A. We had a lot of, uh, lot of good content this session, but um, if we aren't able to get to your, your questions submitted during this session, we'll work to address them in future uh, informational sessions. For example, that that third version session of benchmarking reporting working group on November 14th. So without further ado, let's dive into some questions submitted. So um, first question, and I think this is for you, Dr. Decarb, is, is this different from the BEPS technical document or is this the same? So referring to um, maybe the, the guides that we're requesting feedback for, is that the same as the technical memorandum that accompanies the regulation or are these different uh, documents? And do you think you could just outline um, what we're releasing and what we need for feedback for one more time? Yeah, absolutely. So again, this is a great question. I know there's a lot of different documents. We're really trying to get everyone's feedback so that we incorporate the needs of the community. Uh, the benchmarking guide that we released for asking feedback for is different from the BEPS technical manual, sometimes called TM24-01, that accompanied the regulation. The, the benchmarking guide is more detailed on how to enter data into Portfolio Manager to meet MDE's requirements. It's, it's kind of an operational uh, guidance to help you actually do some of the things outlined in the regulation. And so that's different. And again, the that guide, campus compliance, and this Montgomery County document uh, guidance, that's all going to get packaged together eventually into essentially an addendum to that guide. Uh, but we're essentially workshopping them right now. That's why we have these working groups. Hope that helps clarify. Thank you for that, Zach. All right. And uh, thank you for that question submission. And so moving right along. I think next question would be, let me see. If you set it up saying, no, don't share data, can you change it? Now that, this sounds to me like a question maybe for Charlotte. And I think at this point, we're gonna pitch uh, any questions related to portfolio manager to the um, portfolio manager trainings. And I think if we could drop that EPA trainings link in the chat, um, we'd refer everyone to that for specific questions regarding the uh, portfolio manager use. Um, and we'll um, just keep diving through Q&A right now for as it pertains to MDE. So, Well, and, uh, and Sam, actually, just going to hop in here. And mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, for specifics, definitely do email uh, and, and look at the FAQ from Portfolio Manager. But in general, most of the fields in Portfolio Manager are changeable. So, you know, if you've selected something that says, you know, don't share this right now, you can always go back and make edits later uh, and update things. So it's almost all of that really isn't set in stone. Thank you for that, for clarifying that, Zach. So then uh, we'll move right along to the next question. Um, who is providing the U bid and when? And can you go back and add it also, um, you know, also referencing what you just said, Zach, but do you think you could highlight that for us? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, again, you know, everything, including the unique, unique identifier is changeable. So you can go back and edit it after the fact. You could benchmark today. Um, and just not have put that value in and added that back in later, which gets to my kind of second half, the first half of the question, which is MDE is going to provide that unique identifier and we'll provide it when the regulation is finalized. So uh, that's coming, you know, if you're practicing right now, feel free to skip that field. Uh, and just uh, when you go to actually submit it to MDE next uh, in by June 1st of 2025, uh, that's the kind of thing to just add back in. Great, thank you so much. And so just time check, we've got four minutes left. Uh, so if you have any questions, um, submit them in the Q&A feature, bottom right-hand corner of the screen, circle, triangle, square. If we can't get them to them today, um, we'll uh, make sure we, we note them for the future and try to address them in future working group sessions. So um, 
but feel free to submit your questions now. So moving right along. So talked about U bids. And we, uh, Colin asks, can we provide a demo of setting up a campus account on Portfolio Manager? So, um, Dr. Decarb, you think you could take that one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the good news is it lurks just like any other um, entry in Portfolio Manager. And I'm going to pitch you to come to the Campus Compliance uh, Working Group next week because we can definitely talk through it there. And so that's where we'll get into the details. But it, it, it can be very simple, but there's a few different ways depending on if you're already benchmarking in Portfolio Manager or you're benchmarking for the first time. Thank you for that. And I'll just tack on to that saying, if if you're looking to sign up for campus compliance or any other further or upcoming informational sessions, just like this one, you can access those signups via the same informational session signup form you use to get access to this session. Um, we dropped the, the Google form in the chat again. I know we've, we've dropped a lot of things in the chat today, but um, it's uh, in the chat if you want to sign up for other sessions. It's also on the BEPS website um, if you've lost track of it. So um, if you're interested in campus compliance, feel free to sign up there. And time check, two minutes. I think uh, we can probably get to one more question. So let me... Okay. So this question is from Martha. Thanks for being here, Martha. Uh, would a public works department with multiple buildings fall under the campus status? Yeah, that's great a question. Great question. So, it as many times as the case, it depends. But in general, if that public works department has you know one building in Towson and one building in Baltimore, that is not a campus. They have to be co-located. So you could see where you've got a. Um, you know, say you've got a big office building and an attached, um, you know, I don't even know, like data, uh, 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 storage facility uh, in one physical property. That's what we're talking about for a campus. I know that's kind of confusing to folks. So I just want to reiterate that they have to be co-located. So it, it's sitting kind of all together. Um, and there's some more information in uh, portfolio manager around campuses as well. And Sam, I know we're just about out of time. I just want to reiterate, because I saw the question come in again, um, the TM24-01 uh, guidance document we released, that is, uh, that is actually part of the regulation itself. That's the technical manual for the regulation, how we do calculations. What we're ha asking you to review now is the uh, benchmarking like document, it tells you how to benchmark. It's a more operational thing, it is separate. And so these are, are two different things. And we're taking feedback on the benchmarking document, which tells you how to benchmark for Maryland BEPS. And we should have dropped that link in the chat earlier so you can get it there. Uh, if you have any questions on the difference between those two though, feel free to reach out to us. You know, we wanna make sure everyone's looking at the right document. Thanks for that, Zach. And just, uh, you know, with that, uh, I think that's the last question we can take for today. So many great questions. Uh, thank you all for your submissions. And if we didn't get to your question, um, we're going we're gonna to work to get to them in, in future sessions. And so with that, we can, we can close out. So uh, thank you all for, for attending this afternoon session, Benchmarking Reporting Working Group Session 2. Uh, we hope you all will join us for Session 3. And just want to show or and say that we will, this has been recorded, we will be uploading it to the BEPS YouTube playlist, which I think we dropped in the chat. And don't worry, all of the things we dropped in the chat, the, all the links, sign up forms, documents, we're going to post in the description of the video when we put it on the playlist. So you can also find it there. So um, just want to say thank you all for attending again, and, and we'll see you next time.